My name is Marcia Rake. My brother Sean Rake died in police custody almost five years ago. And I am standing along with Trayvon Martin's family, his mother, America, for justice where there's been wrongful doing by the state. That's right. My brother, as I won't go over the whole story, but the latest is that after the inquest where the jury found that the police more than minimally contributed to Sean's death by their actions or inactions, the, the, the coroner did not allow for there to be an unlawful killing. But the jury was so brilliant, effectively, <laughs> they came with an unlawful killing because his death was wrong and lack of duty of care. That triggered for the um, IPCC to reinvestigate my brother's death, or the, reinvestigate the original investigation into Sean's death. Because originally, they found that the police did absolutely no wrong whatsoever, even though the evidence was compelling, compelling, and CCTV evidence to show quite the contrary. So when the jury saw the same evidence that we put forward in the inquest, they wrote one of the most damning narrative verdicts in history in the death in custody, and I thank them so much for that. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, also, we also did our own investigation, and we did our own documentary so that we put it on YouTube on the day that the verdict came out, on the 1st of August, 2012. That documentary is called, Who Polices the Police? And it's the families, it's the people that have to police the police. Because the government are not doing their job. They are not making officers accountable. It's not just police, it's also prison officers. It's also psychiatric NHS nurses. It's also immigration, as we heard recently, the death of Jimmy Mabenga. Blatantly, blatantly, they killed him on that plane. I went to listen to the evidence. I heard the witnesses of the um, plane star give their evidence, and they blatantly murdered him. Right there and there in his seat. So, now, families like mine, and, and um, Trevor Martin's family, have to continue fighting and unity is our strength. We need the people on our side and there's no other way to do that. There's no other way. We forced the IPCC to unprecedentedly hire a criminologist to look into the IPCC's original investigation. That report came out, the Dr. Casale report came out on the 17th of May. 2013. It's a public document. I urge you to, to look on the IPCC's website and read that, that document and it highlights all the flaws that the IPCC made in my brother's case. And now they have no choice but to reopen that investigation. They have told the family that it will probably be around three months or so and there's not much more that I can say. But what I want is for the officers to be charged for the wrongful murder of my brother. Yes. And I will not yes. stop yes. until we get that. Yes. Even if it's the first time or the one day when an officer goes to prison for the wrongful death, it will be a happy day yes. Yes. for all of us. And I promise you, my brothers and sisters, I'm doing it for all of us because my brother's already dead and he's not coming back. But I'd be damned if I was to sit down and do nothing so that other people, our loved ones, should die in this horrific way. My brother died on camera. So I can prove what they did. My website is www.seanrigjusticeandchange.com www.seanrigjusticeandchange Trayvon Martyr's mother, I'm with you. All the way in England, I'm with you every step of the way. No justice! No justice! No justice! No justice! No justice. No justice. No justice. Blessings. Hold it. Blessings. And
guidance to everyone in it. You know, um, as I go by the name of Gennaro, aka Change. As an artist, I want to share some words. But first and foremost, I want specifically the black people to understand that we need some unity amongst ourselves, you know. And um, that unity is kind of like what's present here. We need to make this a daily occurrence without having to to wait for situations like this to arise. You understand? So, um, blessings and love to all of the other races and nationalities of people that are making this bigger than what it needs, what 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 it isn't, I should say. You know, um, because the unity is is about people in general, right? Fighting against injustice, but black people, we got our own fight which starts at home. Do you understand? So. What I'm going to say right now is specifically to us. Listen, here we are, standing tall. I take a drop from my eyes the way my people fall. Because we act the fool, just to hide the scars. Most sisters don't know their worth. Most brothers are behind bars. We came from kings and queens. I'm talking Africa. They call it Egypt. You know it's commit. We done navigated the globe before they can even step. And brought mathematics and science to the Western world. Now teach this to every little black and girl and see if they still want to kill one another for diamonds or pearls or stand proud knowing who the hell they are in this world because our past is our present and our present is our past that's why we still walk around backwards in the dark self-hatred is the cause of a self-destructive mind search deep within your soul and i'm sure you will find that we are a people listen we're still killing all our prophets while we stand here and watch we done come a long way but not long enough and only we can change our people and we're strong enough yeah i'm done with all the talking it's time we show some love and all the fathers that's got kids out there it's time to get in touch and all the moms who use the kids to blackmail and call his bluff put your bitter thoughts aside and put the youths them first because no woman can raise a young boy to be a man and no girl can really respect a man until she respects her pups all the crabs in the barrel it's time we work as one because united we stand and divided and fought and divided we fought and just for the record i hope we don't miss that call because mother africa is calling us all listen that's what i want to say to you guys always stand that unity in numbers like malcolm x always says a man who stands for nothing will fall for anything what do you stand for blessing guidance and love <laughs> Martin would have happened to anybody, any one of us here. What happened to Jimmy Mubenga shouldn't have happened. Jimmy Mubenga had the right to be in this country and he had the right to stay in this country. He had no reason whatsoever to be deported. He was a father of five who was married and living with his family and Jimmy was involved in a fight. You can imagine if somebody provokes you because you are a black person, you, should, you shouldn't fight back. You should just put your hand down and then let, then let that person hit you, hit you. And Jimmy fought back and because of that reason, he was sentenced to two years in prison and two years means automatic deportation. And Jimmy, when he, when he was fighting for deportation, he was temporarily released and then they took him back into detention. All the people who worked at the detention centers, they came and said, Jimmy was a well-behaved man in detention and even all the flight attendants who were, who were on duty on that particular day, they said when he came up on board, he was well behaved. They didn't see any problems. But because he has always been insisting that you cannot deport me, they're going to kill me back in my country. And they were forcing that deportation. For the, the, the reason that Jimmy was being deported is because if the deportation doesn't go ahead, then they have to be answerable to their own bosses. And also they will lose a 300 pounds bonus. So they have to make sure that deportation goes ahead. And also they did stress that most of the time that they see the deportations are to the West Indies. That's where they mostly see the deportations go ahead. And there's a lady who was a, a key witness called uh, Louise Braham. She was the flight attendant working in the area where Jimmy was. And she said that the way they were handling Jimmy, he had three officers from G4S, one on either side, one on the left, right, and one on the front. And they were needing him. That's the word she used in the court. They were needing him. And she said people didn't take any action because 
even the flight attendants who were working on the plane, they were even scared of the G4S. They were even showing them that the impression they were getting was Jimmy was faking a heart attack. So nobody took any action. They, they, the staff went to the captain, they went to the cabin crew manager, and they were ridiculed. And also, there's another guy called Ayo before who took action when he saw somebody who was being tried to, to be deported. And he was arrested and was thrown out of the flight. And uh, they took away even the money that he had because he was going to attend a family wedding. And they took away his money. And for the same reason, I guess nobody took any action. There was one uh, witness who said he, he feels sorry and regret that uh, he didn't take any action and he said he's going to be haunted for the rest of his life because he didn't take any action. He said if he had done something, most probably Jim would have died. Right. So we're not going to stop until we see justice for Jimmy and we are calling for corporate um, manslaughter charges and we also want and um, for Sean Briggs' family, exactly the same thing that happened to Jimmy is the same way that they killed him. You can imagine you're sitting on your on, on the on the flight. You know the, the you know that uh, table in front of the of the seat. It was on top of Jimmy head, Jimmy's head. They couldn't even find his head. The flight has in the said we, we we tried to go several times. They couldn't even locate his head, but you could just see the three G4S uh, security guards moving their uh, shoulders, and they were needing him. And as a result, they killed him. And it was a good verdict that came out. It was nine to the majority was nine to one. Yes. <laughs> Just want to say on behalf of all the American volunteers and the families of Trevor Martin in the United States of America, and I want to say on behalf of all of us, all of us from black people in the United Kingdom of England, we are in total solidarity with uh, the fight against all what's happened to, to our, our black brother Trevor Martin in America. It is totally unacceptable and we are absolutely in, in total indignation as to what's happening in, in, in America. We are going through the same thing you can see. Um, as the sister here showed me my brother was killed by racist white police right here with England, so, so we are in solidarity with the family of um, Trevor Martin in, in America. I want everybody in the United States and all over the world to know that black people we, we, in England, we win so, full, full support, as you can see we're here, and so the, and so the American embassy in support right? as, um, as to all what's happening and we, we, we absolutely stuck with him at what's happening. Thank you very much. You want to say something? I'm with the family. The same thing that happened with a happy campaign. Solidarity. Trevor Martin family. We're here with the family. We support him with everything. Every step of the way. No justice, no peace. Absolutely. Greetings brother. I'm glad you um, decided to put this DVD together so that the community know what's happened who couldn't make the American Embassy for this devil eagle up there for the demonstration that's taking place today with all these different organisations coming to share their concerns about what's happened. Um, could you tell me what you think about the verdict, the so-called misverdict that, that we got on um, Sunday morning? Okay, well, first of all, I would like to send my condolences, my deep condolences to the families of uh, Trevor Martin, who was murdered by that racist demon, George Zinnemann. And um, uh, all I have to say is that um, a crime will, had been committed. And by him, he was the only person who committed yes. the crime. And um, George Zenneman is responsible. The criminal. And um, the verdict where George Zenneman get let off free, it's totally unacceptable. Mm -hmm. It's totally unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, on behalf of the black community here in, in England, we are 
upset, we are hopping mad at this verdict. And we join with all our black brothers and sisters in America, and in particular the family of um, Trevor Martin. We join with you all in our total indignation at this callous and racist, totally racist uh, uh, American system. And, and my, uh, another thing I want to say is, um, Mr. President Obama, if you are listening to this, um, I would simply uh, like to ask, what are you going to do as President of the United States, as Commander in Chief, yeah, yeah. what are you yeah. going to do about this very serious and sensitive Injustice. racial situation? Injustice. That's all, yeah. that's all, that's all I've got to say. Yeah. Thank you. American government have been killing our people for hundreds of years. This isn't nothing new. And without going into the politics, or should I say politics, we all know what it is. See? But you see what? That's just the surface, yeah? Because it's not only physical warfare. It's not only physically that this wicked government are killing our people, but it's also psychological warfare. And they're going for our children. They want all of our children, and they've got most of our children. Why do you think our children are running around following all this foolishness? Where do you think they get it from? The, the, the wicked government have got hold of the music industry and have got all these big artists chatting all this foolishness to lead all our kids in the wrong direction. Yeah? And I can talk first hand. I know I look young, but I'm 36. Yeah? And when I was 18, following this society and what I thought was the right thing, I ended up in the wrong kind of places with the wrong kind of people. And the way this society is set up, it's set up to destroy our children and to set them up to fail. And if it wasn't for a strong family structure, I wouldn't be standing here right now. I'd be dead or in jail. Because true to the way, like I said, this psychological warfare, which is the deeper agenda behind this physical warfare of what that should take in all of our children. So this psychological warfare is causing for all of our children, and I have my daughter, 14 years old, it's causing them to have mist in their mind. Now if you've got mist in your mind, then even if you can see something right in front of your eyes, you ain't going to be able to see it, even though it's right in front of your eyes because you've got mist in your mind. You understand? Now, I have to sit down with my daughter and actually watch all of the movies with her. I have to take out the time, watch the movies, watch the music videos with her, and actually decode and code break what's actually going on. So when she sees Nicki Minaj, I'm like, alright, you like the music, but let me tell you what she's actually saying and what that actually means. And if you behave in this way, how you'll be treated. The good thing is my daughter listened to me. And one of her friends at school, she actually stopped hanging around with her. My daughter's 14, but she stopped hanging around with one of her friends at school. Why? Because she started sleeping with people. And it started to look wrong. And I said, look, you see, your friend is following what she thinks is cool. And look where it's leading her. So this is a poem called Mist in My Mind. And like I said, this is a first-hand experience, me, myself, and what I went through. And, and like I said, if I didn't have a, a strong family structure, I wouldn't be here right now. I'd be dead or in jail. Okay, so this poem is called Mist in My Mind. I can't see because the mist in my mind is so foggy. It's crowding my judgment and making me groggy. I don't understand why I'm feeling this way. Yes, I do. It is all of the drugs that I take. I've been walking around with my eyes wide shut. Mm, no wonder that I've got bad luck. I'm so high and spaced out that I can't feel the warning and my ears are so deaf that I can't hear the calling. I've been crying in my sleep, I woke up with a headache. My soul is tormented with disappointment and heartache. I want to get rid of this feeling, how do I do it? Alcohol and I'll be the spliff and run through it. Throughout the years and all the drugs that I've taken is like I'm heading on a road to self-destruction. Why do I do this to myself? I don't understand it and the way that my life is, this ain't how I planned it. I can't see because the mist in my mind is so foggy It's clouding my judgment and making me groggy I don't understand why I'm feeling this way Yes I do, it is all of the drugs that I take Class A drugs pulling me away from reality But at the time in my heart and soul is where I feel like I want to be I've got so many feelings but so little words That can explain the way it really is, the way it really hurts Not being in control of your mind is kind of worse than death A way to describe it is kind of like being possessed The way I feel more time, I can't explain it So I just keep it inside and only contain it 
I can't see because the mist in my mind is so foggy It's clouding my judgment and making me groggy I don't understand why I'm feeling this way Yes I do, it is all of the drugs that I take So why don't I stop and try and break free And fully connect to this reality which surrounds me So why don't I stop and try and break free And fully connect to this 